gentlemen, welcome to the fitting of the nipper undercarriage tool. The fetching gloves, of course, it's feckin' cold, as is the hat, as is the uniform. Here we have a set of the potential replacement bungees, HD 1080s, which are fitted to Piper Cubs. This has been set fitted uh, initially just as a trial fit for a load test on this fuselage um, for the purposes of certification from the LAA. So now I'm going to fit the undercarriage tool remove this one and then fit the genuine undercarriage bungees that are in short supply for nipper kits and components. You may have to drill out these very slightly to 10mm diameter so that these tubes can pass through. The reason we've got to have these spacer tubes in here is so that uh, the tool can pivot as the undercarriage legs are pushed apart. I've already put that one in there. They're both just nice snug fits. Right so now we have the undercarriage tool, very simple tool, trumped up by my good self. Um, it's easier if you're working from one side, so just pop that tool in there. Um, the tool is marked up as colour code, you can see a red spot there, white spot there, white spot there, and you'll see the red spot on the other bit at the moment. So ensure you put the washers on so that it butts up against the spacer tube properly. Wash is already on there, put that right through there, wash on the end, and this one up to here. Um, you're obviously going to do this upside down on the aircraft, so um, it's a bit easier for me here with this fuselage as it is now. Pop this one on first so that that one, when it goes on, doesn't get in the way. And just basically spin this guy up until it comes up tight to the tube, and you're going to have to just tweak it maybe a tiny little bit for your particular fuselage. This then unscrews back and we put the other piece of the tool in there. Once again, not forgetting the washer on the end. Pop that guy, oops, other way around. To there. Now, the span of size on all of these is in actual fact 17 millimetres. Bear with me while I just go and grab a 17mm spanner. No, I've got an adjustable here which will do for the purposes of demonstration. But the flaps on here are for 17mm. This type of spanner is effectively known in the trade as an AFS spanner. I'll let you work that out for yourselves. Okay, so just nip them up. The colour on the uh, this one, the red dot on there, is on the other side now. It doesn't matter, just as long as you've got red to red and white to white. We then simply screw that guy in there. And what I would ask you to do is to make sure that the tool remains lubricated, clean, and free from grit and everything on the threads because that will obviously increase the life of the tool. So we can all use it a bit more. I've got two sockets on go here 15mm and a 17mm. Different sizes so that you haven't got to go and steal from other socket sets. And wind that guy in there. Okay. So now we're all set up to basically wind the tool out. Using two ratchets makes it simple because you want to keep the tool equally spaced so you don't bend the, uh, the threads here any more than you uh, really have to. So if you've got two uh, ratchets on the go, it just makes life a little bit easier to keep them in sync. So, kind of away we go. Right. Now, um, what we're doing here, essentially, oops, is we're just going to squeeze the, uh, the rubbers apart. So in actual fact, where are we going the other way? So we're undoing both simultaneously. We don't have to use a pair of sockets on this. Um, but uh, and you can use spanners. What am I doing here? I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? I'm going the wrong way with that one. tool is square, basically undoing, as it were, both. 
excuse me, no, we're undoing one and we're doing up the other because the way that's all the same. Yeah. So, uh, working like this, keeps it all nice and speedy. safety. Obviously there's an awful lot of potential energy in this uh, band here and you'd normally have another one here. So you've got a pair of bands. The potential energy in there is enormous. So keep your eyes, fingers, hands, limbs, everything away from anything that might let go. This tool is not certified. It is used at your own risk. So, here you go. Carrying on a leg. out a bit I wasn't zoomed in in the first place so so now what we've got is you're in a position to, uh, to take that undercarriage leg off so what I've already done is I've already backed off these bolts so forgive me this is a uh, damaged fuselage so I'm just going to uh, use a pair of mole grips just to pull the bolts out the only two bolts you need to take out of the undercarriage is this one. Obviously make sure there's no load on there before you go releasing it. You'll soon feel because you won't be able to pull the bolts out. So two bolts you need out is this one and this one. So before I do that one, let's just see if we've got any load on there. So you can see now that uh, the bungee is being pulled up here and essentially all the load is being taken off of this here. So what we can now do is withdraw this bolt and this happy chap is now free and all the energy is still stored in these two threaded bolts there. Now what we do in order to change the rubber, because I'm going to put the genuine Neiman ring on here now, is basically to unload the tool. So turn these guys around and take the load off the tool. Keeping the tool square. You soon notice that the tool is going um, bowed because the, uh, the threaded rod here will start to bow. And uh, that will start to damage the uh, threaded rod. Fitting this bungee, if you are going to use the 1080 instead of the Neiman rings, is to basically put across here. You don't want the crossover on the top side 
of the, uh, of the two rubbers here. So you want the crossover on this side. So if you're going to use this particular bungee, join her down here just to keep it pretty. Figure of eight over the end of the tool, like that. And then basically wind the tool up, keeping the crossover on this side, on the lower side of the undercarriage. And just wind the tool out and do the same as I'll be doing in a moment with the genuine lean rings. So off he goes, and that's what the cub bungee looks like. It's very cold in here, so of course it's uh, quite difficult to use if you've got a nice warm hanger then uh, it'll make fishing a little bit easier. Okay. So here we have a set of bungees, very kindly loaned by Gary. Gary, thank you for this and the group I'm sure appreciate it. So what we're going to do now is close the tool up even more because like I say there's no point working yourself hard in order to get the bungees on. So by hand now you can just close up the tool a bit more. This is pretty much what you'll be doing on the aircraft when you change the rings anyway. One of the longest jobs of doing this on the actual aircraft will be trestling the aircraft and supporting it carefully so that you're not going to damage it whilst you've got the weight off of the undercarriage. So well, for the purpose of the test, I'll just do the front end here because I've only got one set of bungees and I'm only testing one set of bungees because my strain gauge won't do a double set. But the test is only purely for purposes of uh, seeing how that 1080 bungee compares to the Neiman ring. So, like I say, no point in struggling. Get this close as close as you like, so you can just slip them all on. Number one. Number three, number four, these ones are Smaller. It's almost as if there's not, there's not the next size up, so you might find you need a little bit of squeeze in there to get these on. Oh, I wish I could feel my fingers. Just go off and uh, have yourself a cup of tea while I'm struggling with this one, will you? the genuine Neiman rings and obviously they need to all be nicely parallel before you put any strain on them because you'll never move the bloody things once it's put together. And you can see how much trouble I'm having with stretching these over themselves. Just imagine what it's like getting them without the tool. Okay then, so five Neiman rings there now, all together, and there's still a bit of space as you can see around the tool, so you're not working hard against the tool or anything like that. So now away we go, essentially, do the same as we did before. And 
да. Ой, на цю лапу. Just put a bit of fresh lube on the threads. Good quality engine oil and all the bits where it's all being loaded up hard. As I say, there's a tremendous amount of potential energy in that lot. The longer we keep this tool in good condition, the longer everybody gets to work. It's a relatively easy tool to make, it's just a 10mm threaded rod, you can get it at a builder's merchants, or a uh, bolt supplier, and these are basically steel tubes drilled out and threaded all the way through, 10mm thread. you're in here by the way and you've got the load off of the undercarriage and the aircraft is safely trestled, it's a good time to think about taking these bolts out to A inspect them and B lubricate them. Where this eye goes through the bolt there shouldn't be any relative movement so it's not as if this eye is going to saw its way through the bolt. However, in theory the bolt should stay stationary in the lugs here and pivot through here. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. It might even be worthwhile just thinking about putting new bolts on while you're there. So, undercarriage leg, get your bolt started, and then offer up the eye to go in there. Bolts in, they're away, the other bolt in. And there you are, all back together again, obviously with your other set of name and rings in there. So now, 
simply take the load off of the tool and you have successfully installed a new set of undercarriage rubbers. needs to be on this side rather than this side because it'll tend to hold the undercarriage splayed if you've got the crossover on this side. So the weight's nearly off of the tool now. You can see the guys come out of here, which means the load is being taken now by the stops on the undercarriage. him enough so he comes out of there. You might want to use a quarter drive ratchet, a quarter drive extension, or something like that. It's a Tommy bar. Undo him. He comes. And I undo him. test on this undercarriage rubber with a strain gauge down here and that's the name and rings installed. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, short video and you all have a nice day now.